Hi, my name is TJ Malkanji, and I saw Jesus in a vision tied to a wooden pole being whipped and taking lashes on his back. And stay tuned to find out what exactly happened at that moment. I want to start off by saying that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So as you pay attention to this story, I want you to lean in, press in, because God's going to touch you today. God's going to heal you today. God's going to do a miracle for you today. Whether the devil likes it or not is irrelevant. Jesus Christ, His power, His miracle working power is here, readily available for you to access. And today could be the day of salvation. You know, the Bible says now is the time to be saved. Now, today is the most opportunistic time to be saved. And so my story starts off like this. I grew up in a church. I grew up uh, in a church in Montreal, Quebec, in Canada, and we had Pentecostal meetings, we had people spoke in tongues, we had all kinds of stuff happening, but I was a young boy and I did not press in, I didn't know what was going on exactly, I just stood in the, you know, back in a pew somewhere and just reading something, uh, uh, either in a book or, I remember I read Revelation through once because of the service, it was so long, I mean I read the whole book of Revelation, but that's not relevant right now. Um, I remember being in church and seeing all this talk about God and, and, and people speaking in tongues, but I never really saw a miracle. I never really saw uh, the power of God in manifestation to the point where people came out of wheelchairs and a lot of talk was about Jesus saving you of sin and that's wonderful and I, you know, I got that drilled into me as from when I was a young child. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe on Him would not perish but have everlasting life. And so I knew that part of the gospel. But about 12, 13 years of age, I ended up drifting away. I ended up going away. I heard a lot about God, but I didn't see much of God in action. And so it didn't, it didn't keep me in tune. It didn't keep me uh, engaged. And so I ended up drifting away. And I remember starting to do marijuana about 13 years old and, and drinking and all kinds of wild partying and all, all that stuff. I remember as I started to do that, when I left the church, I developed something called obsessive compulsive disorder. And some of you watching, you either have it or you know people that do have it. Now, a lot of people, they think OCD is like, oh, he just washes his hands or he's clean or he's hygienic. That's not what OCD is. OCD is far beyond that. It is, is it, it is a demonic oppression. It is satanic in root. Now, I know doctors can say it's a lack of serotonin in the brain or it's a chemical imbalance and all that stuff. And they can show you exactly on a biological level what's going on. But beyond biology, there is a spiritual realm and the Bible says that it is a spirit of bondage that leads to fear it is bondage and if you have this if you have OCD or any type of mental illness or disorder you know exactly what I'm talking about people that struggle with suicidal thoughts they don't want they don't want to have suicidal thoughts if you ask them would you like to think about killing yourself today they're not thinking yeah you know it's I enjoy th they don't want it anymore there's something in them there's a demon that is tormenting their soul and drives them to have these thoughts these repulsive thoughts that they can't put away only the blood of Jesus can set people free from that and so I remember all throughout those years, till I was about 20 years old, living with this obsessive compulsive disorder, this mental torment, and it, it really messed me up. What took people 15 minutes to do, let's say you get up in the morning, brush your teeth, take a shower, and then go to school. What takes 20 minutes, 25 minutes, have a little breakfast, would take me hours. Going to work, just simply getting in your car and going to work because of, and you can go and study it on your own time OCD. I won't get into that uh, much of a detail, but there's intrusive thoughts that the devil whispers into ears. If you don't do this, your family's gonna die. If you don't do this, you're gonna get sick and die prematurely. If you don't do this, and there's these thoughts that they, that's why they call it, there's an obsessive compulsion. The compulsion, there's something that's compelling you to do something you don't wanna do. So let's say you turn on a light. A lot of people know this part. You know, people that flick lights on and off a certain amount of times. Well, the reason why they're doing it eight times or 20 times or whatever, is because if they don't do it eight times or if they don't flick this light 20 times, they literally have been, They've bought the lie of the devil that their house is gonna burn down. You know, if they don't do a certain amount of push-ups a day, they've bought the lie of the devil. Unfortunately, there's this mental bondage and stronghold that leads them to actually believe that they're gonna get sick and die of a terminal illness. If they don't do certain things, if they don't do certain things, they're led to believe because of a demonic 
spirit that awful things are gonna happen to them. And so this is not something anybody wants to live. I remember living with this and sitting down one day and just thinking, I'd rather, I'd rather die than live with this. I'd rather, and I ended up having suicidal thoughts because when you have that, you don't have a regular life. You don't have a normal life. What other people are doing takes you 45 minutes, two hours more to do. I remember staying up one night. I stayed up till 4 a.m. because I was doing weird things and all that. It, it messed me up. And so when I was about 20 years old, I finally said I was smoking so much marijuana. I was doing everything, harder drugs, just to, to suppress these thoughts, just to drown out the noise. And so as long as I was high, it was a little better. But that wasn't the solution because the moment the high dried up, it came back harder. And so I remember at one point I got kicked out of college because my grades were low. I was missing classes because of alcohol and, and, and drugs. And I remember just thinking to myself, you know, my brother, he's, he's doing something with his life. My sister, she's doing something with her life. My, I come from a good family. They all did something. My whole family is doing something with their life. Here I am, this totally weighed down by this thing resulting, resorting to drugs and alcohol and doing absolutely nothing with my life. And so I ended up just thinking to myself, I'm not, I'm going to go back to church. I'm going to get saved and become a preacher and evangelist and start doing crusades. I had no, no plans or intentions to do that. What I did think though is I'm going to get clean. I'm going to clean myself up. I'm going to go back to college. I'm going to go and get a real estate diploma or maybe go into accounting because I, I, I like that field. I like numbers. I like sales and stuff. So I thought I was just going to do that. And that was, you know, the anxiety would go away. And if I just took this, this action that perhaps I would be freed from this, this torment, but instead it went the opposite direction. The moment I stopped smoking, the moment I stopped drinking, the moment I started, I started to just try and get clean in my own strength and power, everything went south real quick. Whatever anxiety I felt before, was like a thousand times worse. Whatever the panic attacks felt like before was a thousand times worse. I remember for about a month, I couldn't even leave my house. I was down to like 105 pounds. Everything I would eat, I'd throw up. I'd vomit, I couldn't retain anything because the anxiety messed me up. And so I remember one day I'm in my bedroom, I'm, I'm having a panic attack. My heart feels like it's about to beat out of its chest. And I think like, I'm about to go and meet Jesus. I'm, I'm, and I grew up in church, at least, you know, at least let me get saved, get right with God. Because up until that point, I my sins had loaded me down. I did not have a clean record in heaven. My name was not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I remember in my bedroom, I got off, I got off my bed and I laid on that floor, and I said, a, I said a very simple prayer. I said, Jesus, save me, and I felt like a blanket come on me. And I, f I knew that I had been born again at that moment. I had gone to an altar growing up and prayed a sinner's prayer. And, I, and I, I'm not against that. I do the sinner's prayer. We, we invite people to Christ all the time. But I had done that a lot, but I hadn't been born again until that very moment. I felt the old heart of stone extracted from me and a new heart with a new desire, a new will, a new, new agenda, new, uh, new vision. Everything was different. Every colors were, blue was blue. Everything changed. I used to not like people very much. I stayed away from people. I loved people. I wanted to give my life to ministry. Two months later, so I get saved there, but I still have OCD because let me tell you something, whatever you don't know and whatever you're not preached and taught out of the Bible, you eliminate yourself from ever partaking in that thing. I had been taught that Jesus can save me from sin and save and forgive me of sin. That's why I partook of it, but I did not, I had never been taught that Jesus heals the sick. I had never heard it. I never, never read it. And so it wasn't until two months later that I was in my living room. Some of you are in your living room right now. And I was on my iPad and I was, I was not presentable. I had a, like a tank top on and Cheeto dip running down my face. And I was just listening to an evangelist preach. And he started to preach out of Isaiah 53 that he bore our sickness and carried our pains. And by his stripes, we were healed. Then he flipped over to the New Testament and he said that Jesus in Matthew 8, 16 and 17, he went about at evening when the sun had set and he cast out demons with his word and he healed all the sick that it might be fulfilled what was prophesied by Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah 53. And I had enough religion at that time. I said, that's the Old Testament and that's Jesus. Things have changed right now. So I'm saved, but I still had that religion that I had to, uh, I had to like wash my brain of. And so I remember the evangelist went over to 1 Peter 2.24, which is New Testament. And this is years after Jesus. 
even died and rose again and ascended on heaven. And Peter says, He bore your sins in his body on that tree, that you being dead to sin might live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed, past tense, not future, not. So I saw from that that I'm not looking to be healed. I got to look to the cross. I'm telling you, at that moment, I, f I saw an open vision. And I saw Jesus right there at a whipping post. And he had blood all over his face. And he was taking lashes on his back. There was blood everywhere. And he turned to me and I, he said this to me. He said, I did this, the whips that he took on his back. I did this so you could be made whole. In that moment, it was like electricity from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. The lightnings of God, like John G. Lake used to say, it just shot right through me. And I, like that woman with the issue of blood, I felt in my body that I had been made well. And from that moment in 2012, I've never had, I've not had OCD ever since. I went back to the doctor. He tried to diagnose me again and do all that. He, uh, he, he said, well, if you feel better, then you're okay. Is there anything else I could do for you? I said, sir, there's nothing you've done for me in the first place. Jesus healed me. Jesus touched me. He said, come unto me, all that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Whether it be depression, whether it be anxiety, whether it be OCD, schizophrenia, cancer, diabetes, pancreatic attack, whatever it is, you're just one prayer away from the power of God reaching into that pit you're in, picking you up and setting you on the rock to stay. And I believe that's going to happen to you right now. I feel the anointing so strong. In the name of Jesus, for all those watching here, from all around the world, I take authority over every demon spirit of fear that would cripple their minds, every demon spirit of anxiety, of depression, that would suffocate them, put a pillow on them, in Jesus' name, hands off. You have no legal right to touch them anymore. And I loose. Jesus didn't just give us power to bind, He gave us power to loose. We bind the devil, but then we loose the power of God. I loose the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to flow through you right now like a river. I loose the healing power of God to run through your body. Every sign of sickness and trace and symptom of disease is being cleared out of your system. You are free. You are healed. You are whole in Jesus' mighty name. If you receive that, just take 15 seconds, lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus.